Hello and welcome to 1415. We are immediately killing someone. I just thought what better way to start the year than with a little bit of murder. Actually, it's not a murder, of course. He is already destined to die. This is Nicholas Jones. Other than our Ida and our main house, he is the oldest Sim in our game. And we are about to see how he is going to die. Accidental no, duel to the death. Listen, this man had had enough of whatever was going on, and he was like, we are going to fight. Let me see if there's anybody in his thing that he dislikes or even has bad compatibility with, and we'll just, oh my gosh, he has bad compatibility with everybody. Clearly, this is not a nice man. Nicholas, what is wrong with you? Oh no, he has good compatibility with a few people. Oh, wow. He has bad compatibility with so many people. I guess I can totally say the duel to the death being a thing. He even has bad compatibility with his granddaughter. This is Roxanne. <laughs> and he has bad compatibility with her. Look at all these dead people that don't like him either. Well, his daughter likes him, but she's also erratic. So I don't know what that's saying about him. But anyway, duel to the death. Let's, let's roll. I don't know why I said roll. We're not rolling. This man is just going to die. And we are going to death by anger. Please don't. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to save right now because I really want to do death by anger, but I'm a little concerned that it's going to um, make him disappear. In which case, I will just reload what I just saved because I really want to see him die from anger. Death by anger. There we go. Oh, Nicholas Jones is dying from a cardiac explosion. It's working. Oh, there we go. He got too mad at whoever he was fighting with. Oh my gosh, his son wants to become gloomy. Okay, Victor, you can be gloomy. I don't care. I mean, I feel like I would be gloomy as well if everybody around me was dying all the time. Oh, here they both are. Okay, well, he didn't disappear. There's Grim. I was going to say, but where's Grim? All right, let me go get his information. Oh no, it's going too fast. Stop it. Okay, you strengthen his connection. What is she wanting to do? You're not chatting with the Grim Reaper girl. No, I need to engrave it. Um, where is he? There we go. Okay. He was born in 1349. Whoops. And he died in 1415. Wow. Okay. That's a long life. And now let's go do happier birthday things. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and do Arthur Price because I feel like if I go ahead and start with him, then I'll know whether he's getting married or not. There are three numbers that Arthur needs to avoid. So I'm not going to say them. Just please don't roll those numbers. Yay. Okay. Arthur lived, which means that we're definitely having a wedding today. So Arthur lived and I've moved his thing. So we're going now over to the Goodwin house for Urian Goodwin. I don't have to do anything with Arthur. We don't take a picture of them or anything when they become a young adult. He will be moving into our house later this morning so that he can get married. But that's not what's happening right now. Okay, so now we have Urian becoming a teen. And there are quite a few things that we need to roll for when they become teens. So the first thing is to just make sure he lives. So let me roll again. Anything but that same number. Okay, great. So he lives. And now we need to roll to see about his wedding. Actually, let's go ahead and do his age up first. And then we will see about his wedding. Because we need him to get his next two, not aspirations, traits. So first, we have Child of the Ocean, which doesn't change anything or do anything. And then this trait doesn't matter either. Look at him being adorable, looking just like his brother William. Except I think he has pink eyeliner on, okay? Oh my gosh, I'm trying to age him up before he's finished aging up. To the surprise of no one. Okay. No, I don't want to maintain him. I'm going to set his age to young adults. All right. Now, let's see what his final set of what his final trait and aspiration will be. Look at his dad coming to see him on his birthday. Okay, never mind. No, he's not. Um, oh, high maintenance. Okay, well, that's all right. Pick a number 1 to 15. The answer is 2. Okay, great. Pick a number 1 to 3. It's 1. Aw, he want, and he's a horse lover, and he wants to be a championship rider. <gasps> we may have to send Urian over to uh, to actually become a horse person. Look at those freckles on his adorable face. Okay, I gotta go take a picture of him. Okay, here is Urian Goodwin. He's got cute green eyes. All right, now, while he's loading back in, we need to roll 
to see if he's going to get married or when he's going to get married. So a one, he doesn't get married. A two to 14, that's how many years he gets married. And then if it's above a 14, he's going to get married in that many years, but have no children. Okay, here we go. Let's see about his wedding. Oh no, he's not going to have any kids. What? Hold on. Hold on. We have a problem, I think, because how many good ones do we have and why are they all refusing to have babies? This is making me sad. Here we go. Okay, William has gone to war. Urien is next and now he's not going to have any babies. We do still have Orvis and Lucius. Goodwin. So I guess we do still have two boys who can get married. But that sucks. Look at him. He just immediately fell out in the... Started making a um, snow angel. Okay, well, I guess he is going to get married in, what did I just roll? 16 years, but not have any children. Oh, well. Okay, we only have one more birthday, and it's little Pugsley. <laughs> Pugsley Hammond. I love that somebody named him Pugsley. Okay, Urian is adorable, and I hate that he is not getting married. Okay, we are over here at Hammond House. There are five numbers, and I just need to notice, note that the last three toddlers have not lived. So I'm going to need Pugsley to do a little bit better than the rest of these. He did. I'm just so happy that finally somebody lived. Okay. Okay, it is time to roll for magic users. So the way it works is every three years, so I don't roll again until... 14, 18, but every three years we roll for the magic users. And here's what we roll. Let me get up here where it says magic user. Um, nope, that's not it. Right here. Every three years I roll. And if it's a man or a woman, their, their, their numbers are different because it was a higher rate of women being accused of witchcraft. So that is what we do. And if the people get arrested, I roll again. And if they roll a six, they get executed. So if they get arrested, it's just for one year, though. And I do have a very cool place for them to hang out while they're arrested. So we're starting at the top. Grace and Morgan, I had to put some of them are the same name, right? So I had to put, oh, and I'm not rolling for anybody that's not a teen because if they're a child and they're doing magic, they're going to be doing it at their house. Nobody is going to catch them. I mean, at least that's what I'm saying. Nobody's going to catch them. So we're starting with Grayson Morgan, the father. He has to avoid three numbers. Great. He is not arrested. Now, Grayson Morgan, the son, is not arrested. Caitlin Gregory is over in France, and she has more numbers, and she got arrested. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to roll for Caitlin to see if she gets executed. No, she does not. Okay, great. Okay, so next is Ivan Gregory. He is not arrested. Paul, their son, is not. And Ryder, I don't think, is a teenager yet. Let me actually look at the info over here. Ryder is still a child. So Ryder doesn't get rolled for. And their daughter, Isabel, is actually not a, not even a magic user. Okay, so Ryder is still a child. He's not, and Isabella is also a child. Isabel is her name. And she's a child. I don't know why I have her listed after him. I guess because the way I was looking at them in the thing. Anyway, Isabel and Ryder, neither one get rolled for. But I do roll for Mom Bella. This is Bella Morgan back over. Oh, my gosh. And she gets arrested. I can't roll another six. Okay, good. She doesn't get executed. Okay. So Bella and Caitlin Gregory. Let me put a thing beside Ryder and Isabel to say that they are children. And let me make that say Isabel and not Isabella. Okay, so I'm going to take Caitlin and Bella away from their homes, which is awful. Well, oh my gosh, what am I going to do about Bella? Because I'm pretty sure that Bella is living... Okay, I'm over here to do a dang birthday that I totally forgot about because Pugsley aged up just fine. And I forgot to actually age him up and take his picture. So let's go age up Pugsley and take his picture. Then we will move our people to prison. Here he is becoming a toddler. Oh my gosh, he looks like every Hammond ever. Like, that's exactly what he looks like. 
any Hammond we've ever had. Look at this little curly head in Hammond. His mom has straight hair. His dad has straight hair. So he's going to also have straight hair. Look how thin his face is. Like real tall and thin. Okay. He's yellow. Oh, that's cute. Okay, let's give him... Aw, he's clingy. Here, oh, Pugsley, turn back and face the camera. He kind of looks like Pugsley with them chubby cheeks and wide eyes. <laughs> okay, here's Pugsley Hammond. Don't look, don't make direct eye contact. It's a little bit scary. Now, let's go send people to prison. At least nobody's dying. And they're only in prison for one year and then they get out. So I do need to put that, make a note in my sheet over here. For the timeline. So they're going to prison in April of 15. So April of 16. I'm rolling for evil people. And prison release. Okay. Okay. For Bella Hayward. Let's see. They live here. Right? I need to change this. Because this is actually the Hayward house. Although I don't know why I'm changing it. When I'm about to move. Um, let me see. Over here. Yeah. Because this is her mom. Her dad's gone to war. So it's just her mom and the two girls. And now Bella has been arrested. So we're going to send little baby Bella to go and live with grandma <laughs> while mom is in prison. So this is Henford. Look at this Price family has a million people in it. And the Morgans are over here like, um, what's happening? Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Baby Bella is going to go stay with grandma while mom Bella moves um, girl, I do not know what you're wearing, but we're going to go down here and uh, teleport her in here, and here's your new home. Okay, assign this bed to Bella. There you go, Bella. Welcome to prison. I don't think she can get out of this door. Like, I think it's officially, yeah, okay, it's locked, I guess. What's she doing? She's just going to do some stretches. Oh, Django's here, by the way. Yeah, yeah, she can totally just walk right out. It's no big deal. That's fine, though. You know what? That's fine. Is there a door here? I'm going to lock her in this area. Lock for um, everyone. There you go. And she's like, I'd rather go in this room. But at least she has a bed assigned to her. So she'll have to be down there. Okay, so I am going to manage the households. And I'm just going to move her in with where Bella is already. They're in... Oh my gosh, I have so many houses now. They're in... Oh, Moonwood Mill, not Forgotten Hollow. I was like, Forgotten Hollow? Okay, Caitlin is now with Bella and all the rest of these people still live in their house. Okay, so we have our prison set up for the year. What else do we have to do? For today, we had Magic Rolls, Nicholas died, all three of the birthdays. They all three lived, like that's a miracle. We have a wedding and we have a baby. So we're going to go do Leah's baby first so that we can then go to our house and get Arthur married to Quinlan. I love that name. One of you guys made her. Okay, so Leah and Ace have had a boy and girl set of twins. And the boy died at birth and the girl died as a toddler. So they are about to have their next baby. So I'm going to go ahead and copy down a line. So that I'll be ready to enter. I like to always keep two lines underneath them when they are having babies. That's one way I can remember who's having a baby. Okay, so they had a one set of twins. And one of them died when they were first born. The other one died in as a toddler yesterday in the game. So now she's having another baby. And it's a boy. And we're going to name this baby Vincent. Yes, Vincent. And it's another boy, and we're going to name him Virgil Wickerson. Okay, so we're back. We have a baby. One baby lived now this time. Girl, I need you to come over here and change his diaper and play with him. Oh, my gosh. While dad's in the bed crying because they lost their toddler and they just lost a newborn baby. All right, now can you age him up? Yes, you can. All right, let's go, little baby Wickerson, Vincent Wickerson. All right, here we go. Blonde hair like mom. White skin like dad. I guess we'll find out when he gets older whether he's got that nose or not. He is calm. Welcome, sweet baby. Everybody just walked off and left you. Dad's eating something he found in the refrigerator. Here is Vincent Wickerson. He's a little bit scary again. I keep, we keep having these babies that I don't want to make direct eye contact with for some reason. All right. 
I think that's it, though. We get to go have a wedding. Okay, welcome to gameplay. <laughs> and back the way we used to do it when they proposed in the middle of the main house with everybody else wearing their pajamas and being in the pictures. Kiss and catch. Yay! Okay, ignore the fact that I think she's wearing pink shoes. That does not matter. Okay, now let's head out here to get married. This is Arthur. I didn't introduce you to Quinlan, but this is Quinlan. I want y'all to stop talking and go get married, please. Uh, she's like, no, I'll go have some some hasty pudding instead of getting married. Girl, that is not what you're going to do. Get married to Arthur Price, please. She's like, I'm going to have some pudding. No. No, ma'am. Come on. He's just standing there. She literally left him standing at the altar. Aww. There we go. Aw, congratulations. Okay, we're ready for the ring and the kiss. Let's go. I did a very good job matching their color blues. Congrats. And you guys get to go out and visit... Oh, I'm on the wrong person. You guys get to go out and visit the barn. And what perfect timing. It is almost 7 a.m., which is the perfect time for our little family over here to get up and get going. As we discovered yesterday in this game, we only have the women in this house. Why is she so stinky? This baby girl needs some help. Okay. Grandma, what can you do for this baby? Okay, that was loud. Change her diaper. There we go. I don't know why she has a gross diaper, but she does, so. Also, apparently, she's very hungry. She hates wake-up time, and she's a picky eater. I remember that from last time. Oh, leave her alone and go to the bathroom. Oh, my gosh, Elizabeth. All right, well, these women have got to do something. Grandma Ida's the only one who is feeling pretty good. She does need to go to sleep, though, so we're going to let her do that. Okay, how was this barn? Um, he super has to pee. That's okay. I don't mind cheating your needs because you're about to go to your new house with your wife after I make sure she's pregnant. Okay, now I'm going to go move them back, move them out, and then we'll be back to our house to play for the day. While I'm doing this, I'm going to load you guys a video that I took of our little dog Skeeter seeing snow for the first time in her life, and she is 10 years old, and <laughs> she just saw snow for the first time. Okay, I moved them in over here, which is the lot where um, the Morgan, where she was living before she went to prison. So when she gets out of prison, she's just going to move back in with her mom because her husband is still gone to war. And so we're just going to see what happens at that point. But anyway, they live over here. So we still have these three houses belonging to our family members over here. Okay, back to our house. And wasn't that an adorable video? I know. She's the cutest. All right, today is harvest day, and we only have two women working this farm that can harvest everything. So we're going to send Alice out one side and Elizabeth to the other and see what all she can get harvested um, while she's feeling great right now. Ida and our baby girl are both sleeping, although I don't know why the baby girl is walking this direction. Maybe she's going to come in this door. Um, yeah. Okay, she's coming in this door. Okay, great. Alice is going to eat, and then she can go harvest. Elizabeth is going out to harvest. Okay, great. Let's do this, Elizabeth. Our chickens are also very hungry, so we need to feed them as well. Y'all are real loud, too. So, I think what we're going to do is Elizabeth is only going to plant for the next season. She's only going to plant like a small little vegetable garden over here somewhere so that um, they have just a few vegetables. But we cannot plant a full garden with only the two of them and Elizabeth being pregnant. That's just not going to work. So, Alice, are you still okay she's still harvesting i feel like the trees are maybe not as difficult to upkeep as the others because they've already have an established thing they just need to weed and water them so i think the trees are okay with staying but not not these things over here okay good she's feeding the chickens we have no more baby chicks so we only have adults and young adults right now I think Grandma Ida really wants to come out here. Oh my gosh. Now we have that Goatzilla is getting old. Alice is 
been taking care of Goatzilla. Now she's going to harvest the, the lettuce. Okay, and we're still doing all right. You're not going in there to do anything with your daughter. We need to clean coop. Okay, great. Ida needs to come check on the kitchen and let's make sure... Yeah, we clearly have things we need to clean up. All right, it is almost the end of the day. We have barely had time to do anything other than harvest. And our little girl is getting tired again. She doesn't eat very much because she's a picky eater. So she eats just a bit and then she puts the food back down. And I have to make her eat again or just let her go without food um let's see elizabeth wants to have some fun and social i'm gonna have her play why can't she play with alice ida is in the bed oh alice thinks she's going to bed too but let's have the two of them play why i don't understand okay you just come and sit down then and you just go play and then i'll have her join the game all right, if I could get all three of them to just leave baby girl alone, but all they want to do is mess with little Elizabeth. Okay, she has put herself to bed, and great-grandma Ida is in the bed. Grandma Alice is waiting for Elizabeth to come in, and then maybe they can, yes, play together. Um, no ma'am, sit down. Look at her. Look at that look on her face. She's like, I'm cheating. No big deal. Sabow. <laughs> Sabow. All right, I just mainly wanted her social and uh -huh. fun to come up a yep. little bit, and then they can go to sleep, and it'll be fine. Oh. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth got logic level two. That's nice. During this winter, while their husband, son, <laughs> brother-in-law are gone to war, they'll be playing a lot of chess, maybe. Uh -huh. Actually, this is the end of winter. We're about to get into springs, which is nice. Maybe. I don't know why I said springs, like it's more than one. All right, game is over. They're going to bed. It's almost midnight, so I am going to leave. Okay, well, it's two in the morning because I thought I was recording to tell you guys bye, and clearly I was not recording, just playing the game and talking to no one. So I'm going to go, and hopefully in the next episode, we have a baby in the house. Potentially an heir, I hope, an heir. I will see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.